Now at 10, averting a government shutdown and allocating millions of dollars to the Pine Belt. How a bill on President Biden's desk is impacting your commute ahead. Plus, fun and fellowship are on tap tonight at the Hattiesburg Craft Beer Festival. The 10th annual event draws hundreds of people to the Hub City. Coming up. Cloudy night ahead, but the sunshine is in our future, and we even have some cooler days ahead. I've got the full forecast coming up. Your news at 10 starts now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. First at 10, President Joe Biden signed a package of six government funding bills into law today, diffusing fears of a partial shutdown. The $460 billion package will keep the Departments of Justice, Commerce, Agriculture, and Transportation running through September. And in Hattiesburg, one of the bills in that package allocates $7.5 million to two major road projects. Good evening, I'm Trey Howard. Hattiesburg Mayor Toby Barker said in a Facebook post, Congressional Bill H.R. 4366 includes final funding levels for a large part of the federal fiscal year budget. And in that budget are two items affecting the hub city. First up, a $3 million allocation to cover some of the remaining costs of the Hall Avenue West overpass. You remember the original estimate for the project was $13 million. But following the COVID-19 pandemic, the price surged to $24 million. Mayor Barker says Hattiesburg's federal build grant only covered the projected costs, leaving the city to cover the remaining $11 million with internet sales tax revenues from 2023, 24, and part of 25. Now with the additional federal assistance, the city can use some of the money for other projects. The second item in HR 4366 earmarks $4.5 million for pre-engineering work around the Eagle One megasite. That project sits on more than 22 acres, 2,200 acres in Forest and Lamar counties south of Hattiesburg. In this post, Mayor Barker thanked Hattiesburg's congressional leaders, including Senator Roger Wicker, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, and Representative Mike Ezell. He said his administration works with Forest and Lamar counties to secure state and federal funding, and that, quote, Effort is part of our success, but having advocates in D.C. working for our community is absolutely critical. Now over to our first alert weather team. Nick, it's a little chilly outside tonight. Are we going to warm up over the next few days? You know, that's exactly right, Trey. It is a cloudy night, and currently here in Moselle at the station, it's around 53 degrees. You notice there you got that northerly wind, and that's because of that recent cold front passage. So, yes, we're going to see those clouds begin to diminish, and that's always good news, and we'll start to dry out even further from all that rain. So just keep in mind, it's going to be cooler and drier. Your weather headlines here notice that, yes, it will be sunnier tomorrow. I can't wait to show you all about that in a minute. And, of course, we've got cooler and drier conditions on the way. Some of those nighttime lows will be a little lower than what we saw the past several days and of course rain is going to return late next week as always if you got weather questions or you're looking to chat follow me on facebook and twitter for the latest try all right thanks nick daylight saving time is almost here overnight clocks will spring forward by one hour at 2 a.m even though you'll lose an hour of sleep you gain an extra hour of sunlight in the evening and tonight, while you adjust your clocks, the state fire marshal says it's also a good idea to check your smoke alarms. Mike Cheney says there have already been 29 fire deaths in the Mississippi this year. And in 17 of those fires, the homes had no working smoke alarms. Cheney says if you can't afford to buy a smoke alarm, you can check with your local fire department to see if they might provide one for free. Hundreds of people gathered at Town Square Park in Hattiesburg tonight to help raise funds for the Downtown Hattiesburg Association and quench their thirst at the same time. It was all part of the 10th annual Hattiesburg Craft Beer Festival. Our Charles Harrington tell us all about it. For a decade, the folks with the Downtown Hattiesburg Association have been celebrating the craft beer industry with its annual craft beer festival. We started this event back when they were talking about raising the, the alcohol limit for craft beer and we didn't have a lot of craft beer available. It's exciting to see how the festival has grown and it's exciting to see how craft beer across the state has grown. Tonight's event at Town Square Park 
featured more than 130 different craft beers provided by 45 different breweries from all over the country. The folks at Urban South Brewery made their third trip up from the Crescent City to participate in the festival. Oh, it's great. This is, such, this is a great festival every year. Um, of course, it's Mississippi weather. It's been hot. We had a tornado one year. You know, now it's kind of like the cool night, you know, so uh, you got to be ready for anything. There were also plenty of local vendors. It's one of a kind, I think, and it's becoming bigger and bigger this year. It was a really good turnout. It's bigger than last year, so I feel like maybe next year will be even bigger. Sawyer Walters of Hattiesburg was one of those hundreds of folks who turned out tonight. I've worked it a few times, um, but this is my first time to actually attend. It's something that brings in a lot of people here to Hattiesburg. This really, truly makes it to where it shows you how great of a town that this is that we live in and that we're able to support. About a half dozen food trucks participated in the festival. Live music was provided by Laurel's Rashad, the blues kid. Charles Harrington, WDAM7, on your side. And Andrea Saffel tells us the Craft Beer Festival can raise up to $25,000 to benefit the Downtown Hattiesburg Association. And in Laurel, you may have seen several people walking through downtown with cups in hand. Today was the first of Laurel Main Street's wine down wine tasting events held each spring and fall. 18 businesses stayed open a tad bit later so that people could come in and enjoy different samples. Profits from the event go toward improving businesses in the downtown area. Laurel Main Street Director Caroline Burks says it's a good way to see what Laurel has to offer and have a good time. We have a lot of people that, you know, walk around while they're waiting on a reservation somewhere um, or go have an early dinner and then come, you know, walk it off, <laughs> um, have, a, have all their samples of wine, do some shopping, listen to the live music in Trustmark Park Park. So it's a great night, great date night, great girls night, you know, it's just a fun night all around. The next wind down is set for Friday, April 12th from 5 to 8. Cups can be purchased on the Laurel Main Street website or in person on the day of. You must be at least 21 to participate. Also in Laurel, dozens showed up today for the inaugural Old School Festival hosted by hometowns Ben and Aaron Napier. The festival was part of the Napier's Osprey Initiative, which focuses on keeping kids away from social media until they're adults. The Napiers, along with Dr. Catherine and Taylor Sledge, spoke to families about social media and its impact on children's brain psychiatry and development. There were also workshops to help kids socialize and experience real-world engagement. The couple says they hope families left the festival with more awareness of what goes on online and how to protect their children. I want our kids to have skills and hobbies that they love, and if they're spending all their time in a fake world on a phone, they're not going to have time to find out what they really love and what they're really great at, what their gifts are. That's the thing we care about most, and for them to not feel alone in that choice. We need lots of families joining in when they're little so they can grow up together like this. To learn more about Osprey, visit ospreykids.com. Looking ahead now, prom season is around the corner and one local group wants every high school girl to have a beautiful dress for their special night. Tomorrow, Forest General's Spirit Girls are hosting their sixth annual Promapalooza. This is an opportunity for teens to shop for their perfect gown, shoes, and accessories, all for a small rental fee, just $12. And with more than 500 dresses available, there's plenty to choose from, so head to Bliss Bridal tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for this event. Coming up at 10, bringing more businesses to the Mississippi coast, we look at plans to fill Gulfport's empty buildings with new shops, restaurants, and more ahead. Plus, using recycled glass to restore the Gulf Coast, how a joint effort at Bayou Bienvenue in Louisiana is breathing new life into an area wrecked by Hurricane Katrina. 